All right, time for a little A or B, Shireen, and uh, we'll see what we choose based upon the questions. Let's begin with this. Which is the real Bengals team? P choice A. Weeks 8 and 9, when they lost to the Jets and the Browns with 75 points allowed. Choice B. Weeks 11 and 12, post by wins against the Raiders and the Steelers with only 23 points allowed. Which is the real Bengals? I'm going to go with B, Mike. This just feels like to me a team that's figuring out how to win and figuring out that they are good, and they are. And I think they have a chance to do special things, not just in the future, but I think they have a chance to do something special this season. We all know how long it's been since this team has won a playoff game. 1990, I think, was the last time they won a playoff game, decades ago. So they need to figure out how to win. We're really good. We can do this. And I think they're starting to do that. 13th offensively. 13th defensively, 6 in scoring, 6 in points allowed. They're just doing a great job overall, and I think this is a really good football team. They just need to keep it going, Mike, and, and figure out how to win some close games, figure out how to beat the better teams, and when they get to the postseason, they could be dangerous. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely, and Joe Burrow – has kind of been a hard reset button on the franchise. The stuff that happened in the past does not matter. The struggles do not matter. All that matters is moving forward. They expect to beat the Steelers. They expect to set the standard. They expect to win games. And I'm impressed by what they've done since those two losses. I think this is the real Bengals yeah. team the past two weeks because they took that bye week. They diagnosed their issues. You heard Joe Burrow say that he had fallen in love with the big play. He realized in that Week 7 win over the Ravens right before the two straight losses – that Jamar Chase was being double teamed more and more. And uh, you, you take him away, instead of trying to force the ball to him or stare him down to the point where the pocket collapses, whatever the case may be, you just throw the ball to other guys who are going to be open or you run the ball more. Joe Mixon has been a star the past couple of weeks, over 280 rushing yards and four touchdowns as they recognize there are running lanes as teams try to stop Jamar Chase. All right, the more surprising winning streak, the Patriots – with now six in a row, or the Miami Dolphins, who have won four in a row, and they have two more home games, plus their bye. They don't play on the road again until they go to the Superdome four weeks from tonight against the Saints, Shereen. Which one's more surprising to you? I think they're both pretty surprising, but I'm going to go with B, the Dolphins, because I thought they were done sitting there at 1-7. and seven. A 1-7 and seven team has never made the postseason, and they have a chance to do that. And if you look at how their winning streak started, it started with barely a victory over the Texans, 17-9. That wasn't very impressive. And then all of a sudden they come out and beat the Ravens, and we're all stunned, right? And then the Jets and the Panthers. And I, I had the game yesterday with them against the Panthers, and I thought they were pretty impressive beating the Panthers last like they did and as you said now they have the Giants and the Jets and the Saints and the Titans and the Patriots and I think they've got a chance here if they just take it game by game they're getting better every game I think Tua has found him a weapon in Jalen Waddle he knows him very well from their time at Alabama and that was definitely Waddle's best game yesterday over 100 yards receiving for the first time and he looked like an elite receiver yesterday Mike yeah, and uh, amazing to see how he's come on at a time when Chase has tailed off and the Patriots, led by Mac Jones, he's now the clear favorite to be the offensive rookie of the year. But I think the Dolphins' win streak is more surprising. I Look, I, I expected the Patriots to settle in like they always seem to do and Bill Belichick to find the best formula to get the best out of the team that he has. The Dolphins were 1-7. They were done. It was over. And I think it worked out perfectly that the window closed on the trade talk involving Deshaun Watson and the Texans. It was over. It was done. There's no reason to even discuss it anymore. After that, what happens? They start winning football games. Yeah. Tua tonga Vilo is no longer distracted by it. And I really do think it was a real issue. They, they, they're not going to be forthcoming about the stuff going on behind the curtain. I think Tua was upset about the fact that they were ready to throw him overboard for Deshaun Watson. They never gave him a fair chance. And maybe he, he did what, what I said all along Tom Brady would do. You get pissed off and you decide to go out and play so well that they're not going to want to think about Deshaun Watson or anybody but you as the team's quarterback. All right, most offensive – let me try that again. Not most offensive, but most impressive <laughs> offensive performance out of these two choices. Nothing offensive about it. 
the 49ers with 34 points, 423 total yards, and 208 rushing yards against the Vikings, or the Packers with 36 points, 399 total yards, and 307 pass yards against the Rams. Which one was more impressive to you? I think this one's pretty easy, Mike. I think it's the Packers because the Rams' defense was number one in the NFL last season. They've added Von Miller. They were supposed to be great. Now, they haven't lived up to that. I get that. But this is a a really talented defense with a lot of named players on it, and they just rolled this team. They punted after a 15-play opening drive, but then they went touchdown, field goal, field goal, field goal, touchdown, punt, touchdown. They also had three red zone field goals on the day, Mike. If they had scored touchdowns on those, just imagine what that score would have been. This was an impressive offensive performance by the Packers. Yeah, I I remember two weeks ago after the Rams were steamrolled by the 49ers running game, the excuse was, well, this this is a team that's vulnerable to the run. It's designed to take away the pass. Okay, what happened on Sunday at Lambeau Field? And, And the problem is, and Coach Dungy made this point yesterday, while we were talking about the games, the idea that that, that this was the measuring stick for these Rams that have gotten Matthew Stafford and Von Miller Mm -hmm. and Odell Beckham Jr. This is all about getting past the Packers. Now, they still may have a rematch in January, but it's far more likely that game's going to be played at Lambeau Field, not at SoFi Stadium. That's what the stakes were on Sunday. So they may have to go back there again. And, you know, we're reaching the excuse making phase of the season for Matthew Stafford. He's injured. He's not injured. But, you know, why is he not playing well? Well, he's dealing with these injuries. Oh, no, I'm fine. Uh, look, the, the Rams are not fine. They've lost three in a row. And I think it was more impressive that the Packers dismantled that defense that has all of these MVP all pro level performers on it and the Packers just have Aaron Rodgers supposedly although plenty of other guys got it done yesterday all right which six and five AFC West team is most likely to make the playoffs so we have three choices here a B or C the Chargers the Broncos or the Raiders all six and five which one of them do you think is the most likely to get in Boy, this is a tough choice, Mike. I'm going to go with the Chargers because I think they're the more talented team among those three teams, but boy, they haven't played like it, and that was a huge disappointment yesterday. They just absolutely laid an egg, but I'm going to go with the Chargers because they do have the the Giants on there. They should win that game, and you figure they're going to beat the Texans, but those other games are are a toss-up, and they need to play well this week against Cincinnati after playing so poorly, and Justin Herbert hasn't played well here of late. Well, they're definitely going to have opportunities to prove it against each other. I see they each have three division games left in the final five, and I think the Chargers, too, when in doubt, go with the team that has the best quarterback. All due respect to Derek Carr, I think Justin Herbert is the best quarterback. The problem is the rest of the team isn't backing it up, and they started so strong, and then they've just kind of fallen into this – just you never know what you're going to get out of the Chargers any given week. That's yeah. a game they should have won after that that win over the Steelers where they fell apart, then they came back and won. And I thought that would give them a boost to go into Denver and, and expose the Broncos as being overachievers. And now the Broncos are 6-5, and five, and I don't know what the hell to think about them because Teddy Bridgewater got injured, and then he played injured because Drew Locke was so bad as the backup. But it's not like Teddy Bridgewater has been great. So I'll go Chargers, then maybe Raiders, then maybe Broncos. Although – I've noticed something that that uh, I find encouraging. Broncos fans are starting to get an attitude again. They haven't had, a, had an attitude in a few years. No <laughs> yeah. reason to have an attitude. They're starting to develop an attitude again. That, that's a sign that a team is starting to come back. The fans are starting to feel it, and they're starting to get a little bit of an attitude. Swagger. So we'll see if the Broncos can keep it going. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.